this is the project we're going to do today. It's a couple of resin ducks and sitting in their own tray. And so let's begin. Okay, when I work with resin, I use this paint spray box that I bought on Amazon. I use this instead of a respirator. It has an exhaust hose that I have vented out the window just right over there. And even though it's pretty loud, since I have pets, I don't want them to be exposed to the resin vapor. And so I always prepare and pour and also cure my resin in this box. And I have it with the fan going. It can be pretty loud, but I keep the fan going for the entire time that the resin is curing. And I also use nitrile gloves while I am preparing the resin. Okay, I got three different colors of mica powder here. And so I'm going to just put a small amount of mica powder I'm going to use some Let's Resin Epoxy Resin. This is a two-part resin with the resin and the hardener. And I'm actually going to do these by weight. Normally you do them one-to-one -one ratio by volume, but I prefer to do it by weight. That way I can do it in any measuring container I like. So I have already measured the total amount that I'm going to need. So I'll start by measuring my A resin. And I want to get exactly 165 grams of this. And I forgot to turn on the vent. Okay, now I have teared my weight and I'm going to weigh 139 grams of part B. Okay, now I'm going to stir this slowly for about five to six minutes until the solution is clear. I don't want to stir it quickly because I do not want to introduce any air bubbles. And I will occasionally scrape the outside walls as well as the bottom to make sure everything is going to get mixed very well. Okay, I've stirred it until it's cleared and the, you don't see the slurring of the two different parts anymore. And now I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes to give any air bubbles a chance to rise. Now to help degas it, I've got a sonicator here with some water in it. And I'm going to put this in here and sonicate it for a few seconds.
Okay, I sonicated for 180 seconds. And so I'll put this aside. And now I'll pour it in these containers up to about this level. Now I am going to mix up the mica powder into the resin. I'm letting these sit now for a couple of minutes and I will bring in my molds. Now I will pour the different colors in kind of randomly. And if I have any leftover resin, I have some little bead molds, and so I put leftover resin in that. Okay, and now I'm going to cover this as it cures so I won't get any dust or hair in it. And we'll leave this overnight and we'll be back in the morning. Okay, it's now the next morning. And we're going to go ahead and unmold these. So I will start with this. And when you unmold, you want to be careful because there can be sharp areas on the top where there was overflow when you were filling the molds. But this is the tray. This is the big one. Once again, you want to be careful because there can be sharp edges here. So this is the big, 
the big one and then this is the little one. Once again, careful along this area because there can be sharp areas. And this is the little duck. And let's go ahead and get our little extra stuff. Okay, so here are the beads. And the little globes. And our two little ducks. Next I'm going to use some alcohol markers to color in some of the areas of the ducks. I'm using a Copic marker for the beaks. This one is YR27. And I'm going to use another brand of alcohol marker. This is from Color It because I prefer the nub type tip over the brush when I'm trying to color in the eyes. It makes it easier not to go over the edges, at least for me. Okay, and the little guy, he's got an extra feature of a little tongue and a mohawk. So I use a couple of other colors of my Color It alcohol markers, a pink and a brown, to color in those areas. Okay, and the next step is going to be to sand off these rough bottoms, and I will be using my Dremel tool for that. Okay, I'm going to sand these pieces down in this sanding box because resin dust can also be toxic, and since I have pets, rather than wearing a respirator, I do all my sanding in this box. And it's got a fan in there, and the fan will blow all of the resin dust out into this white bag. Okay, and I'm going to be working with two grits of sandpaper. I'm going to be using a fine grit and a coarse grit. And I will start with the coarse grit. So I will put that in my Dremel tool. And then I'm going to turn on the fan, and it's going to be quite noisy, but we'll do the best we can. Okay. And then we'll just sand off the edges.
Okay, I overfilled one of the beads and so the hole got filled in and so I'm going to just drill it out. Okay, and this is what the sanded bottom looks like after I've wiped it off with a wet rag. And this is the other one. I could also put a small coating of UV resin on top of that to make it so that it's a little shinier and a little smoother. And the bottom of the tray. And then these are the different beads and the little globes. Okay, for these rough edges or rough looking edges on the bottom. I'm going to just use some UV resin. I've got some Let's Resin UV resin and I'll put just a little bit on my silicon mat and I have a micro brush here and I'm just going to paint it on. I have a UV lamp here. This is the kind that you can get usually with kits for UV resin. And I'm just going to shine this UV light on there. I don't want to cure my little dollop of UV resin that I have on the mat. So I'm going to put this away or point it away from that. And I'll just set this down like that and point that towards it and I'll do the same with this. Alright, and to finish the curing of the UV resin, I've got an always on lamp here now. And so I will just turn this on. And leave this on for a while. I'll reposition it to give different areas a chance to cure. Because I want this UV res resin to be totally cured and so uh, when this is all finished we'll be back and these are the final ducks with their tray and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching bye